Welcome to our review on chemical and physical changes. So the first one we're going to look at then is the physical change. Now, whenever we talk about a physical change, we're referring to where we're changing the state of matter. So this would be something going from a solid to a liquid or a gas to a liquid. So a few examples that you've almost certainly encountered in either science or just everyday life. Ice melting, dissolving, these are both examples of physical changes. Now, one of the ways you can identify a physical change is because you can actually reverse them in almost all cases. So you can obviously get back what you started with and no new substance is being made. So even if you think about dissolving, which is one that tends to trip people up, if you're putting sugar in water, it's not actually changing from sugar in water. It's just dissolved and mixed in. If you evaporate off that water, sugar is still there. There's no new substance that's been made. If we then consider the chemical change, this is where we've produced one or more new substances as the result of a chemical reaction. So a couple of key examples, if you're cooking an egg, for example, or rusting. Now, the way you can generally identify a chemical change is they tend to be irreversible. So once you've cooked an egg, you can't somehow make it uncooked again. And we also tend to have very different properties in our products to those we had in our original reactants. So if you think about a raw egg, it's got a very different set of properties and taste and color and texture. All of these things are very different compared to the cooked egg. So just bear in mind the difference between the chemical and the physical changes, those two key things to look for. Can it be reversed? And are the products the same or are they different? Are we making new substances or not? If we now consider what happens to the actual particles during physical and chemical changes, we'll see a clear difference. So if we consider the physical change, first of all, we start off with water molecules in ice. So in a solid, they're all packed closely together, vibrating around a fixed point, but they're water molecules. If we then melt that ice into just liquid water, what we find is we still have water molecules, but they're able to flow. So the only thing that changes is the arrangement and the movement of the particles. The actual particles themselves remain unchanged. If we now consider the chemical change, this is a very different situation. So what we find in a chemical change is that the particles are going to break apart from each other and then they're going to join together in different ways, which is what we can see in the animation at the bottom there. We're starting off with methane and oxygen on the left hand side, and then they're going to break apart and reform as carbon dioxide and water on the right. So hopefully what we will be able to do now is actually give us the difference between physical and chemical changes, some examples of each and describe the differences in how the particles behave in both physical and chemical changes.